Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. Today we are tackling the topic which is both simple and incredibly important which is naming things in code. This video is inspired by coding aesthetics. So if you want to check out his channel, you can check out. I will add the link for his channel. Yes, it sounds very straightforward, but as a developer, this is really important thing for your career. As we all know how tricky it is to have a meaningful, understandable, readable and concise names. So let's dive into the art of how you should name things in your code. Let's start by why naming is so important. In coding, names are everywhere be it variable functions fields classes interface your files your database names your tables columns and many things good names makes your code readable understandable and more maintainable not just for you but for your teammates as well and for your future self as well if you are coming back after one year if you have kept your names very concise and very meaningful you will be able to understand your code much better than giving any random names poorly named elements on the other hand leads to lot of time wastage lot of bugs and lot of unmaintainability which will lead to lot of confusions in your code avoid single letter variables so if you are taking the variable names as x y z a l then you should be avoiding those things those are okay if you are working with any mathematical formulas or anything those type of variable names make sense because it is highly used within the mathematics fields but rest of the places you should give the name very concise what that particular field is doing suppose if you want to identify some retries then make sure that whatever the name of the field is suppose max retries allowed which means that is the maximum number of retries allowed that is a variable which is storing the data for you so your name should always have a particular meaning to it like what it is trying to say so focus on the variable name such way rather than just a one letter word never abbreviate so if you are writing any variable names you should try to avoid any abbreviations what abbreviations will do is abbreviation will leads to lot of confusion suppose if you want to store a username rather than giving usr name or nme as a variable name give a complete username that is user u s e r n a m e complete word for storing your username that will help you to identify what this particular variable is storing the data for you so try to avoid any abbreviations if you are using in your code make sure that you are using the variable names completely as we are using different id tools which allows the auto completion we do not have to worry about short names types in your name so generally the idea behind is that you should not give the types in your variable names suppose if you are storing an integer of count then rather than giving your variable name as int count you can just give us a count which will store the integer for you okay so that's how it should be but there are such cases where storing the type of the variable makes sense suppose if you want to store the length of an array then rather than just giving or telling that it is a length variable if you say it's an array length variable which will make more sense for you to identify that this variable is to calculate the length of an array so make sure that you are using it correctly so wherever it's possible let's not use the type of the name in your variable name because the type itself will define that what is a type of that variable rather than you putting it extra into the variable name but if you want to specifically specify something like the length of an array like the size of a map something like that at the time if you're making sure that you're adding the type as well in your variable name that should be allowed because that is something that we have seen in lot of programming languages in lot of libraries as well people are doing that units in your variable name so if you are dealing with some unit information either it be matrix or imperial and if you want to store that information or you want to justify in that information like you are storing in units if you are storing some information of the speed then you defining that the speed is in kilometer per hour or mile per hour will give you much more understanding of your code like how your code is dealing with rather than just telling a speed okay so when this type of information are stored and when you are working with this such kind of data at the time adding the units in your variable name will help you out in the longer run types of your types so when you are naming classes or interfaces rather than giving a generic name like a processor we don't know if you have defined a class as a processor we don't know what that processor means but if you define a specific type that okay this is the order processor this is the payment processor this is the notification processor 
such kind of thing will identify that okay this particular class is to identify or to work for your payments to work for your order or to work for your notifications so giving a generic name will not help you in the longer run but if you specify a classes that has a proper meaning to it like what that particular class is supposed to do then it will help you in the understanding your code better naming a class base or abstract so if you are creating the classes sometimes what we do is to make sure that we support multiple inheritance or multi level hierarchy we create a base class or abstract classes or some interfaces and we give that name as a base class or a abstract class rather than doing that by the keyword itself we know that if you are creating an abstract class we add an abstract keyword to it rather than we adding the name abstract into the name of a class so we should avoid those scenarios where we create a base and abstract class by giving the name to it by the name of the class itself we should be able to understand what it's supposed to mean suppose if you are working with the vehicle right then your base class should be vehicle your abstract class should be vehicle and if you wants to modify it or if you want to extend it that can be extended into two wheelers four wheelers or car truck whatever it is if you want to work with a truck class that truck class can be a direct base class you do not have to mention it's a base truck or an abstract truck it can be truck as a base class and if you want to extend it you can extend that truck class into separate concrete classes like uh, trailing trucks semi trucks and so on so that type of things that we should do rather than giving a base or abstract class to the name itself don't name code utils now this is highly controversial in many of the programming languages utils are not di directly used but in some of the programming languages you will see that utils are highly used and many of the libraries will also directly be adding utils in their libraries if you talk about spring right if for java you will see a lot of utils files and there are m bunch of other libraries which will add direct utils so if you talk about string utils right you take about any different libraries maybe apache maybe googles and so on there are different bunch of libraries available right everywhere you will see a string utils class or a bean utils class right so at most places if that particular language and libraries are used to that nomenclature then it's okay to use but if you are doing or if you are working with any other language and other libraries just look around if those are not using it we should be avoiding such kind of things as well rather than that you give a particular name what it's supposed to do that will help us to understand what that particular code is doing rather than just giving a basic utils as a name descriptive function names so if you are writing any function then we should make sure that we give a name of a function as a descriptive function so suppose taking example that i want to validate a user's data which is coming as an input for me rather than just taking the data and giving that method name as a process that data which will not make sense to me because the, i'm taking the data and it's just doing a process what process it is doing i don't know but if i specify that validate user data and whatever the data i'm taking as an input that particular method name will identify that okay i am validating the user data in this particular function and this is my input data so i will know from the name of the method itself that what it's supposed to do within that method rather than we, i going into that method and understanding the bunch of code so your function name should be precise enough to understand from the name itself that what it's supposed to do rather than a generic name avoid contradictory names we are all guilty of this because we have always been doing it wrong what we do is we give the name of a boolean variables as a negation variables so rather than me defining that okay this is enabled or not what i will check is is it disabled or not it will confuse a lot because our brains are wired to see everything as a positive rather than negating it right so if i say or if i write my name as is enabled and then i check with true and false that will be more understandable to me rather than me defining is disabled as false and true because in my mind i have to now negate everything because by default it should be enabled and not enabled rather i'm just flipping everything so i'm just adding a negation every time extra to it so rather than doing that always try to have a positive variable names rather than negating variable names now as we talk about lot of different things like what we should do i'll give you a couple of more tips and tricks as well to make sure that you are not doing those mistakes 
what we can do is we can use some linters available so there are a lot of linters libraries available so we can use those linters libraries it will check our code whenever we are writing some variable names it will check for our spellings it will check that uh, we have written our variable names in a proper syntax or not either we are using snake case or we are using camel casing whatever the casing it is are those correct or not so linters will help you to make sure that your variable names and your syntax are correct for your variable names as well we should also use refactoring tools so whatever the id you are using either vs code or intellij idea jetbrains ide or google's id whatever you are using most of those ids have an inbuilt refactoring tool which will help you to refactor your uh, variable names or function names to a better naming convention and it will also give you suggestions for better names so try to utilize all those functionalities so that you are writing your variable names or classes names whatever the naming convention you are using correctly a fresh pair of eyes for your code review will always help you to write better names so if you have already raised a pr don't hesitate to take a review from multiple people it is always better to take reviews earlier rather than doing any mistakes or pushing our codes with a incorrect naming conventions to the production always ask why before you write any names so if you are writing any name just think back like why i am writing this name is this name defining the purpose which i am trying to store the data or any process the data or writing a method name whatever it is just ask why and if you are getting the answer from that particular name then you should be good enough so that's what i wanted to share today and remember naming things is an art and a skill that you will develop with practice and experience it will not be like you are in fresh year and you will be directly be able to write really good names i have seen that as an experienced developer as well sometimes we make mistakes but that's all okay all these things which we discussed earlier should be revised every time and based on those feedbacks based on those loops refactoring tools we should be able to fix our issues as well fix our code and naming convention as well but it is really important to follow the basics of naming things and make sure that you understand what you are doing and what name that you have given make sure that after one year if you're coming back you should be able to understand that what you have written so that's been it if you have found this video helpful then do like this video and share with your friends and colleagues and don't forget to subscribe my channel as well you can also click on the join button to join my channel and support me as well let me know in the comment section below about any other tips and tricks that you want to share about naming the variables or naming anything in the code until then keep coding keep learning and i will see you in the next video bye bye